Hello, and welcome to Great.com Talks With. Today, we're talking with Camille manning Boom, President and CEO of the Center for Planning Excellence, an organization championing the power of good planning to build livable, resilient communities throughout the state of Louisiana through their work as policy advocates, educators, and planning experts. And if you're new to our podcast, please press subscribe button either on YouTube or your podcast app, because today we're going to learn about an organization that is helping Louisiana communities realize their vision for a better quality of life. Hello, Camille. Welcome to Great.com Talks. It's very excited to have you here. Hi, Kareem. Thank you so much for having me. I'm wonderful. Uh, how would you describe Center for Planning Excellence for someone who is not familiar with your work? We're a mission-driven organization to help Louisiana communities imagine what is possible, create a shared vision for their future, and then work with them to develop a roadmap for achieving that future. We're the only planning nonprofit in a state uh, that doesn't have a, a, a state-level planning office, and so we've become the de facto source for communities to understand their options for shifting development patterns, and building future resilience. For the longest time, you know, planning wasn't a priority in Louisiana. It was actually pretty unpopular. There wasn't a lot of population movement, and we're a high private property rights state. Uh, but the tipping point that finally created more demand for land use planning came when our state was struck by two devastating hurricanes in 2005. If you remember Hurricanes Katrina and Rita, um, these disasters exposed Louisiana's vulnerabilities, and it provided us with the impetus and opportunity to address the fact that our environment is changing and our development patterns and built environment are not suited to these changes. In fact, they're increasing risk for our residents and businesses. So we've been working with communities throughout the state to help them understand their options for shifting development patterns and planning for resilience so that they can protect their families, their livelihood, and their culture and be better prepared for the future. Mm. Wow. The fact that uh, the state of Louisiana has seen several um, natural disasters in the last 20 years, and um, it shows how important is it uh, to take planning into consideration and the lack of the government organization uh, mm -hmm. is not a good indicator, yet there is an organization such as yours uh, who is there to replace it or even make it better when uh, communicating with communities, understanding the needs of communities and helping and building them uh, with them together a plan um, that will be sustainable for their lifestyle and improve the quality of their lives. Um, for someone who doesn't um, is not familiar with the concept of planning, and uh, could you please describe what does planning mean and what are some some of the benefits of it? Yeah, so um, we 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 promote and and um, lead publicly driven, transparent planning processes, and so it's when you set the table. You invite everyone to the table, including those that have traditionally been left out of the conversation around how decisions are being made in their community. And you discuss the vision for the future, the needs, the opportunities for the community, and the challenges that need to be overcome. And so through that publicly driven, transparent process, we develop champions because we are there facilitating the dialogue, facilitating the conversation to help them create the vision, but then using our expertise to connect the dots between housing, transit, transportation, roads, economic development development, workforce, beautification, um, all the things that of the built environment that, that make quality of place and that, that contribute to that built environment. And so we developed the roadmap for, the, for the, the, the community to implement so that they can achieve that vision. And one of the really critical reasons that I believe it's so important to, to set the table and have everyone there is people support what they help create. And we have short-term decisions a lot of times being made at the municipal or county scale. And you need champions that were part of that planning process who will keep the plan alive and will, will ensure that um, whenever there's elected officials and turnover, uh, that the plan 
continues to be championed and implemented. Mm-hmm. Thank you for clarification on that, that the uh, planning does not only include one area of life and the life of community, it includes uh, transportation, housing, infrastructure. So every aspect of community building and every aspect of the quality of life um, takes um, has some planning efforts to it. And um, the fact that um, you are bu- bringing um, underrepresented communities, you are building all members of uh, communities together under one table so everyone can work voice their um, worries, uh, their concerns, and work together on a plan that can not only benefit specific neighborhood or specific uh, community, but all communities throughout Louisiana. So that's very important uh, to uh, understand and realize that. What are some of the challenges Louisiana communities are facing uh, at the moment in their planning efforts? So some of the key issues, like the rest of the nation and much of the globe, Louisiana faces significant challenges on top of climate change, including severe poverty, poor public health outcomes, and economic vulnerabilities. And in most cases, we experience these challenges sooner and more intensely than other states. These are entrenched problems that have developed over the course of decades and addressing them requires vision and long-term thinking. And we can't conquer these challenges with short-term thinking, but unfortunately, you know, too many of our power brokers and decision makers think and act in terms of election cycles. And that's why planning is so critical to this. So that's where this, you know, planning comes in. We help communities draw the connections between these challenges, create the vision, Um, And then that can be implemented incrementally over time so that they can thrive. Ultimately, it's the community's plan, their vision, uh, and it's our expertise to help them get there. And so for CPEX, um, you know, we in in Louisiana, you don't do planning without addressing uh, resilience and adaptation and climate change impacts. And so um, we we are in, in in many ways ahead of the game there because we've we're resilient because we have to be. We've been on the front lines um, of the triangulation between um, these um, 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 economic, uh, social, and environmental uh, risk for so long. Mm-hmm. Wow, the number of the challenges that you mentioned that Louisiana communities are facing um, uh, seems to be uh, large. And uh, you mentioned that uh, municipalities and the leaders are thinking about uh, the short term. So the cycle, if the cycle is like five years, they're thinking about the five years. Yet, due to the geographical location of Louisiana, due to the social state um, that uh, Louisiana communities are, um, the planning system, the planning infrastructure doesn't uh, shouldn't be a short term, it should be a long term that is sustainable, that is uh, focusing on the needs of the communities on daily and uh, yearly basis, not on just a cycle that uh, uh, leaders come and go. So that's very important to understand that. You mentioned some of the challenges um, that communities um, and the state of Louisiana faces. Could you please uh, describe uh, more in detail the effects of those challenges and how the planning uh, is uh, refers, uh, reversing uh, those effects of the uh, climate uh, change in state of Louisiana? Okay, yeah. So, um, so climate change, equity, and health disparities are huge systemic challenges. Mm-hmm. And so realistically, no one community is equipped to handle them on their own. The disparities are also continually growing because communities and peoples with means are able to lay out the resources it takes to adapt to climate change, but our poor populations end up being left behind with few alternatives. We are are witnessing Um, um, a lot of migration. People are all moving north due to the sea level rise and um, subsidence that our coast is experiencing in addition to um, the 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 annual flooding that we're having, and so a you know it not only at the community level is it incredible to have or necessary uh, to have that plan uh, for adaptation, but it's also Uh, critical to have a coordinated statewide plan. 
Because like I said, communities can't handle it on their own. And so um, we have been working with our governor and the state to address this uh, through changes in governance. We call it the Adaptive Governance Initiative. initiative. Um, you know, a few years ago, and, and I should note that our state has a, a large master plan for restoration and protection projects to address our coastal crisis, um, but the social, human, community aspects um, have to be handled and addressed differently, and, and it takes all levels of leadership and, and everyone uh, having a seat at the table. And so uh, what we've been doing with our Governor's Office of Coastal Activities is, is to help the state agencies provide the support and coordinating on planning for an equitable climate friendly future. And so this collaborative approach that we've been working on over the past two years um, can help us forge a path to mitigating climate change impacts across the state, um, but especially in Louisiana's most vulnerable communities and and provide those local communities the support uh, that they need to adapt to climate change. Mm -hmm. It's very unfortunate that the population living in a coastal area is seeing the results of the rising sea levels and it's causing them to migrate, to leave their communities behind, to migrate to the northern part of the state. And it indicates that some of those people might not have uh, uh, efficient resources to migrate or uh, they don't have another choices. And that's why it's important to bring the attention as your organization is doing the attention of the governor, the attention of the policymakers. So uh, communities living in the coastal uh, area of Louisiana have support, have Mm -hmm. um, their needs being met, as well as they are resilient um, to the uh, climate change effects happening in the coastal area of the state. Uh, Besides um, your advocacy, you also run several projects uh, such as 20-Minute Neighborhood Program. Could you please tell us in detail about uh, this 20-Minute Neighborhood Program? Yeah, and and so um, our organization works at all scales. So we work at the neighborhood scale, um, helping um, um, transform the built environment to municipal scale, county parish scale, and then, you know, work regionally and then at the state level scale uh, all around build design, land use, policy and programs. And so when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, we, we noticed that it was a great opportunity for people to get out of their homes. And, and we are more of a suburban area in Baton Rouge. And so we created the 20 Minute Neighborhood um, Bingo, which you can download on our website. And it's just a, a really great a- activity um, because it's related to healthy community design. Um, It's where residents can see if in 20 minutes they can access shopping, healthcare, schools, other needed services within a half a mile of their home. Um, Getting to and from these locations should be safe and pleasant, uh, which encourages overall health and increases neighborhood vibrancy. Uh, The neighborhoods also, you know, could, you know, encouraging diversity because they serve the needs of a population varied in age, race, and and socioeconomic status. And so um, we had a a lot of individuals and and families um, do the 20 minute neighborhood, um, let us know what their issues were, if, you know, areas where they they couldn't cross the street, where they wanted more bike lanes. Um, And then this was also recently published in um, our Common Ground, the National Association of Realtors um, quarterly magazine uh, this quarter. And so uh, we've been We've been very proud of the the activity and we create a number of other free um, activities to help decision makers, uh, also model tools and model resources, all of which um, can be downloaded on our website um, and free to anyone uh, who who needs help in planning. Mm -hmm. 
I am familiar that the uh, food deserts, um, especially uh, in the suburban and rural areas of United States, is causing many population the lack of uh, basic needs, such as lack of grocery stores in the closest mile, the lack of uh, health uh, facilities. Yet, uh, through um, the program that you created of 20 Minute Neighborhood, um, uh, people can track whether uh, all their needs, um, immediate needs, whether it's come to the grocery, health, public education, they are being met. If not, they can, uh, using your tool, they can raise their voices, they can raise their concerns, and then um, uh, you can communicate those concerns um, to the policymakers at the end to make sure that uh, the effects of food deserts are not happening in the state of Louisiana and neighborhoods have all access to basic needs, this, as mentioned by you, despite their social economic status, despite their age, uh, race, and gender. So that's in. Uh, uh, very uh, insightful um, to see that the effects and the impact of this uh, the 20 minute neighborhood program is making on the lives of the community members throughout the state of Louisiana. Uh, another uh, sector um, area that your organization focuses, your programs focus on is uh, transportation choices. Could you please uh, tell us some about um, some of your efforts in this area? Yeah, so um, we we focus on um, the importance of connecting jobs, housing, um, and transit and all of our planning. And when you think about affordability um, in a place, you have to couple housing with transportation cost. And, and, and that's really critical because a lot of times that gets left out of the equation. Um, we have been proponents and helped lead um, the implementation of policies around complete streets, both at the state level and um, at the local municipal levels across um, multiple jurisdictions. And so getting the engineering departments to start thinking differently about the human experience and how humans need to move around um, and have options and choices and how they're moving around uh, creates vibrancy and a healthy, healthier community. Um, and so we do a lot of work around that. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's challenging when, you know, there, if, there's a desire for big, big engineering projects to just create more roads and expand roads and, um, too much data and, and um, you know, bad examples have proven to us over decades that it just creates uh, more room for cars. And so if we're going to reduce our emissions uh, to save our planet and address climate change while also building healthier communities, uh, we have to build transit and mobility into our planning and into our guiding principles of, of what our future vision is. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for highlighting the fact that uh, increasing the roads, uh, the number of roads, is not always the best solution. In fact, it reverses um, the amount of work that is currently being done uh, to prevent climate change. So uh, instead, working together with communities and with the engineers to make sure that there are more transportation choices available for the public uh, and uh, they can get to their homes uh, and through their uh, to their work much easier, much faster. And so the quality of their lives improves and um, planning it and integrating um, the solution uh, in on the state and um, municipal level when um, making decisions and transforming the road systems uh, is very, very um, important. Uh, how do you see the landscape uh, of planning uh, changing uh, in state of Louisiana in the upcoming years? Mm -hmm. Um, so our our organization and 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 many others in the state have had a lot of impact. Um, we've been part of a paradigm shift. So, for example, in 2005, when hurricanes Katrina and Rita hit, only 15 out of our 70 our 64 parishes had comp comprehensive plans. And to date, CPAX has worked in over 50 communities, helping them develop and implement their plans. And so that paradigm shift towards mo more robust public discussion around developing the vision for the future, changing how public dollars are spent to en enhance the community as a whole, uh, we've been part of that. And in Louisiana, we've been planning for the resilience and climate 
climate adaptation for over a decade. So in that regard, we're ahead of the curve so far as lessons learned around planning um, what we're doing. Um, something new for us that's going to be um, um, you know, more pressing is uh, Louisiana has been recognized as home to the first climate refugees. Uh, while that designation may be debatable, it's true that the Ilda Jean Charles uh, resettlement was a is a is a pioneering effort in addressing the challenges faced by vulnerable and indigenous communities being displaced due to land loss and climate change. Um, we have a number of buyouts uh, happening across our state as well, and so I think. Um, the future in, in Louisiana around planning, there's going to be a lot of population movement. Uh, we're already seeing it and planning for that and, and moving people out of high risk areas. And so um, I don't know of any government uh, in, in the United States that is prepared for this, that is uh, equipped for this, um, uh, including the federal government. And so uh, we will have a lot of focus on making sure that this is done in a fair and equitable and um, um, empathetic manner moving forward. Um, people with means are adapting. Um, adaptation here is, is highly means-based, um, and many are being left behind and and and, um, and, and dealing with the annual uh, threats uh, of flooding. So. Um, this, we, we have a lot of challenges ahead of us, but, uh, the spirit of Louisiana people, the resilience of our people and how we come together and, um, help one another out, just our cultural aspects. Um, I think that there's going to be great transformational change that comes from this and we'll be able to share those best practices and lessons learned with the rest of the globe. Who's, who's going to be. Uh, and this place eventually is, or many places in, in the same place we are. Mm -hmm. The fact that in 2005, only 15 um, Paranese communities were ready that they had a, pl a plan, yet uh, working with you in the last 16, year, uh, 16 years, the number of such communities increased by three times now. 50 communities have a plan and um, you are working on um, pre-factum, uh, so uh, pre-natural uh, disasters, pre-flooding, uh, affecting many lives instead of doing it post factum so the more planning we, we do, uh, the more risks that we can mitigate and the more people, uh, the less people can suffer. As you mentioned, uh, the people of Louisiana are very re resilient and uh, the struggles that uh, you are facing through the natural disasters is bringing you together. And there is a hope going to the future that the mm -hmm. bond will go continue and uh, Louisiana state will um, be a role model uh, for other uh, communities and uh, across the United States as well as uh, across the world on how to uh, be resilient and better equipped uh, uh, to the effects of the climate change. If someone would like to support Center for Planning Excellence, how can they do that? If you go to our website, you can become a member. Um, our membership dollars are really important and, and critical for the work that we do. Um, you can sign up for a newsletter. You can um, advocate for the causes um, that, that, that we're promoting and, and getting involved. And, and all of that can be found on our website, um, cpex.org. Mm -hmm. The link to the uh, website of the Center for Planning Excellence will be provided in the description. So you viewing and listening can go to the website and familiarize your, yourself with the great work Neil and uh, the team at um, CPEX are doing and uh, find uh, support them in their mission of helping uh, Louisiana communities to have a better quality of life. Thank you so much, Camille. It was wonderful to get to know you and the great work your organization is doing. Thank you so much, Kareem, for having me on your podcast. For you listening, if you enjoyed this conversation, please press like and share button because this will show the YouTube and podcast algorithm that this conversation is important, that planning is very, very essential for building better communities across the world. Thank you and see you in the next episode.